Welcome to another edition of the Palmer Public Schools Presents. I am Mary Lou Callahan, the principal of the Palmer High School, and I have with me Mr. Christopher Beaudry, who is head of the, our music department at the Palmer High School. We are here this evening to share and showcase with you the music and memory program as it has evolved over the last couple of years. This program has provided our students, both in band and chorus, the opportunity to gain insight into the use of music as a treatment for the elderly, as well as community service for our students. At this time, I would like to turn it over to Mr. Beaudry, who will talk about background and present our students and the impact that it has had on them. Thank you, Mary Lou. Um, this is a very exciting program for us, um, but I have to give most of the credit to the students. We try uh, at the beginning of each period as an activator to expose the students to something exciting and new and different uh, in the field of music. And uh, we sort of happened to, along this clip of Henry that uh, I, I thought I should share with the kids. And when I, uh, when I put it at the front of the class, there was a moment of silence as it ended and, and they just uh, asked what they could do, what they could do next. So that was a, oh, it was a fantastic feeling. And from there, it's just uh, grown into something that we're actually about ready to bring to real people, to bring out to the public and to bring out to these two facilities. It's very exciting. Um, it's and heartwarming to see that the students have such compassion and and care for, for their community members, especially for the elderly. Um, it's, it was, it's just been a wonderful thing. I'm so excited that we're gonna get to take this out of the school. <laughs> it's a great program for our students, not only our students, but our community as well, um, to bring that partnership together, looking at our elderly, our students, mm -hmm. and our community. Yes, up to this point, uh, we have had one iPod drive. We've had one showing of the Alive Inside documentary at Palmer High School. We've hosted that. And uh, since then, we've uh, collected through donations 77 iPods. Uh, we've also been able to purchase splitters for two person listening at a time, a student and a resident. Um, we've also been able to purchase uh, some iTunes gift cards so that when someone asks for a specific song that we don't have, mm -hmm. we can buy that for the library. Uh, we've also had CDs donated, uh, used CDs donated. Right now we're up to about 1,500 CDs in the Music and Memory Library, which we're housing in the band room at Palmer High School. Mm -hmm. um, thanks to Benchmark Senior Living, we also have a dedicated laptop and a hard drive to uh, to house the electronic material. So we're just about ready to start going out and getting, uh, sitting down with some of the residents and doing some listening together. That's awesome. Mm -hmm. Very exciting. We also have with us Mrs. Um, Elena Fulkerson, who is a parent as well as Mr. Beaudre will talk about how she too has been very much of a, a, a prime individual in helping us to foster support and bring about the music and memory program. Yes, uh, Elena is our first contact. Uh, we've known her through the music boosters and uh, we've been working with the atrium uh, through her and uh, Orchard Valley and doing programs like our uh, holiday cheer tour. Uh, the marching band will go over to the mm -hmm. atrium and Heritage Woods and we'll play uh, for the residents. We'll parade for the residents. Uh, at, at initially uh, before we hit, head to the Big E, and uh, that's something we're doing annually now. The, um, the residents love it. Mrs. Callahan, um, sorry, Mrs. Fulkerson got us, uh, got us involved with that. Yes. So when we came across this program, we called her first, and uh, she's our go-between uh, between our, for our students uh, to be able to connect with Benchmark Senior Living and, uh, and the residents there. So. Um, She's here to talk about that end of the, uh, of the program. I'd like to welcome Elena Falkerson. Uh, Elena is a longtime music booster. Um, 
parent of a band member and uh, several band members and uh, and also our connection to benchmark senior living and uh, and I wanted to I wanted to ask Elena to discuss how this looks from the benchmark senior living end well thank you Chris. Um, First of all, uh, we couldn't be more delighted with this partnership between Palmer Schools and Benchmark Senior Living. We have two Western Mass communities, one in Wilbraham, Orchard Valley, and the atrium at Cardinal Drive in Agawam, both which have significant populations of seniors that are suffering from some level of memory loss, Alzheimer's or some kind of a related dementia. And this program benefits them specifically. We probably would not have had this on our radar screen to put this into place as soon as we did if it hadn't been for the Palmer Music Department coming and com coming up and saying, we wanna partner with you on this. So as a result, we put this into our business plan, we put it into our training plan for our staff, and we wound up going and getting registered with the Music and Memory program through musicandmemory.org. Uh, taking the webinar training classes with all of our programming team members in both facilities and coming up with a framework to implement this program. The beauty of this is that with the help of the students at Palmer High, it really minimizes the amount of work in taking away from resident face-to-face -face time that our staff have to do because the students are doing most of the iTunes management. They're doing a lot of the background kind of support for this program, which so it doesn't take anything away from our programming team spending one-to-one face-to-face time doing activities with residents. And plus, our, our team doesn't have to know all the technology either, because some of them are still in the flip phone stage. <laughs> so it's been, it's been fabulous, and we couldn't be more excited. Um, music is very important in what we already do with our residents, in, in the fact that we have music therapy that comes in, music entertainment. But this is so personalized and so special because it is this individualized approach for one-to-one -one impact through music and helping to improve the lives and improve communication skills with people with memory loss. Mm -hmm. so. Yes, and I think, um, I think it's a perfect pairing. Uh, this is just a great time in a person's life in high school uh, that they have the time, the energy, and the, and the, res and the resources to actually do this type of community service and uh, do something meaningful. Well, and I have to mention, they're already doing meaningful things for us. Um, we've had, as you know, more than a decade of th this, these students, these musicians performing mm -hmm. for our residents and already being face to face with the jazz band, with the, with the senior chorus, with the community band during the summers, and with mm -hmm. the marching band in the fall, already performing for these audiences and providing that face-to-face -face entertainment value. But now this brings it into a therapeutic value in mm -hmm. addition to a performance value. It allows, um, music is one of the best therapies that somebody can have that isn't a medication, isn't a pharmaceutical. Mm -hmm. And studies do show that. And you know, we would like to avoid psychotropic medications if possible. And so if we can sure. look at things that are behaviorally, environmentally, and programming wise to do with people to help them have a fabulous life experience in these golden years, we want to take advantage of that. Absolutely. Um, and and I, th I think uh, we have several students that are ready to go that way too, but I'm really excited to see the first one-on-one -on -one with a resident and a student. Well, we have many opportunities. Um, I would love to see somebody, just two people, somebody a little younger, somebody a little bit more experienced <laughs> and age experienced, side by side, listening to a joint playlist and sharing their feelings and their thoughts. Mm -hmm. And we have people that have diminished verbal skills as memory loss uh, progresses. But they can still hum, sing, finish a lyric, things like that. Mm -hmm. That stuff is retained. And it's very exciting to see the impact that it has. But there is lots of opportunities for the Palmer High students to get face to face with our residents mm -hmm. one on one um, in many different ways, but just even sitting quietly listening to music together 
um, especially during the most challenging times of day is usually those after school hours, mm -hmm. that 3 p.m. to 7, 8 p.m. time that we call sundowning, oh, wow. yeah. where most people's confusion is actually heightened. And what, what a gift that would be to have the students one-to-one -one during some of those time frames. Mm. And I think that's going to feel great for the students as well. I think it's going to be a win-win. It is. I, I think um, you know that's one of the things that working in senior living for the past 11 years has showed me is that the impact that it's had on my own children, being around very elderly and gaining that respect and also the, um, the wisdom and the knowledge and the, the a lot of insight into the generations. Mm -hmm. Whereas if you're not in that touch day in and day out, you just, we, we get in our own kind of peer bubble a little bit and mm -hmm. this expands that out into a greater community. Absolutely, and then what a, what a nice way to, uh, to have these young people get, get used to the idea of going beyond themselves and doing something Good. You've got fabulous students. Um, Absolutely. They are, I mean, you've got fabulous students. They're already there. Yeah. They're already there emotionally. They're already there. They are the, the best kids that I've ever yeah. seen. But to be able to tap into that for this specific audience, mm -hmm. that is sometimes, they don't, with our, with our global society that we have now and people moving career-wise, a lot of these folks either don't have local family or their local family is one adult child or things, they don't see their grandchildren, or in many cases, your students are the age of their great-grandchildren. They don't get that day, day in and day out touch with the younger generation. And they get so excited to see them walk in the door. And already after the Christmas, the holiday performances, I have residents stopping me in the dining room saying, when are they coming back? When are they coming back? <laughs> that they feel like it's their band. Yeah. <laughs> so we can, you know, that I'm, that's, I get that constantly because they know I have a connection. Mm -hmm. So it's just the excitement, the energy that you see just by having young people in the building, then you throw music in on top of it all and the only thing we don't have is a fuzzy puppy. Yeah. <laughs> so we're, we're, we were just talking about the hardware that we have, most of the hardware we need in place already. What's, what are the next steps to, to get us out so there? So the next steps is, is we're already starting to solicit playlists because one of the things that we have to do is a personalized list for each person. So what songs are the most important? I would love to see, for example, I was uh, as we were talking, maybe even a dessert night with some of our families and some of the mm -hmm. students where the students can help the families to figure out how to put that playlist together so then the residents can create it in iTunes and sync it to an iPod. So our families are struggling a little bit with understanding some of the concepts as mm -hmm. well, and this is one opportunity. The other thing is, is that we will have some of our programming and department head team from Benchmark come to Palmer High and to do some in-service training um, with the staff, you know, what, is it, what does it take as far as volunteerism, how do you, we coordinate the whole logistics of it for that face-to-face -face and how, you know, as far as, you know, what is your contact within the building and everything else. And we have some staff identified that are eager to get that set up as well. Mm -hmm. And then it just comes down to as far as who's got a free afternoon and wants to come in, you know, do they want standing appointments or do they want ad hoc appointments? Do they want to be behind the scenes technology wise or do they want to be face to face? Mm -hmm. Do they want to be doing performance or do they want to do be listening? There's all kinds of opportunity. Great, oh, that's excellent. Um, so we'll be looking forward to that uh, pretty soon. And, um, and I think we have some students here that would like to talk a little bit more about, uh, about the music and memory program. Thank you. Thank you very thank you, much. Thank you for having me. <laughs>
Papa. Hi, Papa. Huh? How you doing? I'm all right. I'm fine. Who, Wait. Who am I? I don't know. Wait a minute. I don't know. I don't know. Okay, it's Cherry. How long has he been in the nursing home? Uh, approximately 10 years. He was having seizures, and my mother couldn't handle him at home. Of course, it affected me greatly because he was always, you know, fun loving, singing, you know, every occasion he would come out with a song, no matter where he was. I remember as a child, he used to walk us down the street, me and my brother, and he would stop and do singing in the rain. He would have us jumping and swinging around poles. He was, you know, he was good. He was always into music, you know, always loved singing, dancing. His name is Henry Drea. Uh-huh. And I'm looking more or less for religious music for him. Okay. Because he enjoys music and he always calls in the Bible. So I'd rather have that for him. We first see Henry inert, maybe depressed, unresponsive, and almost unalive. Henry. Yeah. Henry. Yes, yeah, so. I found your music. Uh, you want you want your music now? Well, not me. Okay, let's, let's try your music, okay? And then you tell me if it's too loud or not. Then he is given an iPod containing, we know, his favorite music. Mm -hmm. And immediately, he, he lights up. His face assumes expression, his eyes open wide. He, uh, he starts to, um, to sing and to rock and to move his arms, and he's being animated by the music. And he used to always sit on the unit with his head like this. He didn't really talk to much people. And then when I introduce the music to him, this is his, his reaction every since. <laughs> Philosopher Kant once called music the quickening art, and Henry is being quickened, he's being brought to life. Yeah. I'm going to take the music for one second, okay? Just huh? to ask you a few questions. Okay? Thank you. I'm going to give it back to you. Uh-huh. Okay. The effect of this doesn't stop, because when the, uh, the, the headphones are taken off, uh, Henry, normally mute and virtually unable to answer the simplest yes or no questions, is quite voluble. Henry? Yeah? Um, do you like the iPod? Do you like the music you're hearing? Yes. Tell me about your music. Well, I don't, I don't, don't, I don't have one, I mean. Do you like music? Yeah, I'm crazy about music. You play beautiful music, beautiful sound. Did beautiful. You did you play music when you were, uh, were you, did you like music when you were young? Yes, yes, I went to big dances and things. W what was your favorite music when you were young? Well, well I guess, uh, well, Cab Calloway was my number one band guy I liked. They did the holy, 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 the holy. What was your fav favorite Cab Calloway song? Oh. I'll be home there for Christmas. You can come plant on me with plenty of snow, mistletoe, present, wrap around you tree. Ow! So, in some sense, Henry is restored to himself. He is uh, uh, remembered. Uh, who he is, and uh, he's, he's reacquired his, his identity for a while through the power of music. What, what does music do, do to you? It gives me the feeling of love. No, no man, figure right now the world needs to come into music singing. You got beautiful music here. Beautiful, oh, lovely. And uh, I feel the band of love, the dream. Lord came to me, made me holy. I'm a holy man. So he gave me this sound. The elders say, I meet you. Let see. Rosalie, won't you love me? Rosalie, won't you be sweet and kind? 
with this beautiful new technology, you can have all the music which is significant for you in something as big as a matchbox or, or whatever. And I think this, this, this may be very, very important in uh, helping to animate, organize, uh, and uh, bring a sense of identity back to people who are, who are out of it. Otherwise, music will bring them back into it, into their own personhood, their own memories, their own autobiographies. This is a real pleasure for me um, to be here with some of my students and uh, I just want you to know how proud we are of these people. They, uh, they're all great musicians but at Palmer High School you, uh, these guys don't just do one thing. I'd like to take full credit, you know, but uh, I can't because they're also <laughs> all athletes and scholars and uh, they're in the drama club and they just do everything well, but they are a great representation of, uh, of our music program and, uh, and the natural resource of Palmer High School right here. <laughs> so we'd like, to, um, we'd like to have them introduce themselves to you. Um, Emma Howell. I'm Maddie Mayshag. I'm Tom Roberts. I'm Brianna Stanley. And I'm Hannah Beaudry. And uh, we are at an exciting moment because <laughs> any, any day now we're going to be able to uh, actually be physically involved in bringing music to, uh, to the, the elderly and uh, being able to sit down and do some listening and see those you know, wonderful little memory bursts <laughs> that comes from listening to music. But uh, this is something that just seems so intuitive. It's, it's a wonder it took us so long to get to this place because we always, as musicians, we always knew that there was something special going on uh, you know, the, the communication between each other when we're performing and just, just the thrill of making music together. You know, we knew there had to be something more than just, just entertainment, but uh, now we're really at a point where uh, I think we're going to be able to live out that what if it's more than just fun. Um, so this is an exciting point for all of us. Um, so, Maddie, you want to tell us how this all kind of Started? Yeah, sure. So we, as a jazz band and as a choir, have been going to local assisted living centers ever since I've been in high school for our holiday cheer tour. And we play for the residents every year, right around Christmas time. And every time that we go in and play, the residents just, their faces light up and it's yeah. amazing just to see so how, even though the music's not individual to them, like it still affects them so much. So I can't imagine what it's going to be like to go with them and listen to music from their past and have them actually like emotionally connect to their past through music. I think it's going to be amazing. Right. At our last, at our last holiday <laughs> cheer tour, um, one woman started crying halfway into one of our songs because oh, yeah. she thought the music was so beautiful. That's right. <laughs> and I love watching them when they're sitting there. They'll be dancing along and singing yeah. as we're leaving. They'll tell us how much they loved it, how much they enjoyed it. It's mm -hmm. going to be really cool to be able to bring it to them yeah. in a more portable fashion. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So um, now, Hannah and, and Brady, mm -hmm. you actually did some research on this for a yeah. science project last year. Could you describe that? Yeah, so um, we had a project and it was to do something on biology. Yeah. And we both chose the same book. Um, this is your brain on music? This is your yeah, brain on music, music, Daniel Levitin. Yeah, and basically there's this really cool study they did where <laughs> There's synops synapses firing off in the brain when you listen to music and when you do anything in everyday life. And when you're pulling a memory from, you know, back, it, um, they'll fire off in a certain pattern, in a certain direction. But then when you're listening to music, all of the pathways and all of the synapses will start firing off and going. So if you think of it like just normally retrieving a memory and say, you know, you're an older person, you want to remember your prom night. So you would start going in your filters, you would go, okay, high school, then um, dances, then like important events in high school. And when you have Alzheimer's, you can't really do that. Your synapses don't fire off in the correct order. But when you're listening to music, your entire brain, all the synapses are firing off and you can access it from a different way. So instead of having to go through that particular filter that you would have to do normally if you had you know, a healthy brain, 
you could go through, say, oh, dresses, blue dress, prom, because that's what you were wearing. And that song will trigger that memory. Or even just the song itself could be. Like if you hear a lot of people dance to Aerosmith, don't want to miss a thing, you hear that and immediately it brings you to that moment. Yeah. It's really that's cool. Very interesting. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And um, oh, <laughs> oh yeah, and the best thing about using um, music to help with not necessarily curing but caring for Alzheimer's is it's far less expensive than the medication they're using now. Like a used iPod Shuffle is about twenty dollars off of eBay, mm -hmm. and they last longer than a bottle of pills will. And they make the residents of these nursing homes so happy they can kind of remember who they were. It brings them back into being themselves, which is really important. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's really amazing to watch, too. Yeah, they just mm. snap to life, and then with the synapses, like, the music will kind of access the motor cortex, like, people who were previously comatose or unable to move will move. Mm -hmm. They may not be able to speak, but you can tell they're still conscious. Mm -hmm. And it's that little spark of life that music creates, mm -hmm. which is one of the big things music and memory works towards in these patients. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Wow. Um, Tom, I, I know you've done some research yourself into maybe a little bit more sociological, historical perspective. Mm -hmm. Can you speak to that? Yes, of course. My freshman year, I had to do a research paper on how language is, how it's tied into society. And I kind of came to the conclusion after a lot of research, that music is a language in and of itself. It's just another way to communicate. It has the four major aspects of a language, like we learn in Spanish class. There's reading, writing, listening, and speaking. Speaking, obviously, is singing or playing. But those four kind of combine to just make a, a way of communication. Yeah, you can't necessarily communicate ideas or thoughts, but you can communicate emotions or maybe connections between ideas that someone listening to a piece of music can really understand. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Wow, do you think that maybe some of those um, emotional triggers may be working inside uh, to make those synapse connections? Right, just like, in the, just like in the clip of Henry that mm -hmm. we just watched, yeah. mm -hmm. you, can, you can see that there's obviously something emotional happening. Oh, it's yeah. not, it's mm -hmm. not scientific, it's not words, it's not, it's more than words. Yep. Mm -hmm. And emotional yeah. responses are more often a stronger trigger because like emotion and feelings are like an innate part of us yeah. as you know, words and language, like as easy as we all pick it up, it's something we have to learn. When you have an emotional response to something, it's already there in you, like an evolutionary. Right. Mm -hmm. More of an instinct as opposed yeah. to an intellectual response. So tapping into that with the music is extremely effective. Wow, nice. Yeah. yeah. Nice. And, um, and Emma, um, you've, you've got a, a whole different perspective on this uh, that yeah. you can offer. Um, it's just that music is prevalent throughout the cultural history all, of everyone all over the world. And it's hard to imagine that that's not something special that should be tapped into, that should be researched. And I think that it can bring people together, it can pin people against each other, and it, music is so powerful in that way. And even now, the way that you know, every generation, the one after them will say, oh, you know, those kids. Well, a lot of what those kids are getting, the reason that they're acting the way that they are, is because of music, the clothes that you wear are influenced by singer celebrities or you know the emotional response that you have to your music yeah. like if you're feeling sad you might want to play something happier and it makes you feel better when mm -hmm. you're working out and you're trying to push a little bit harder you might play that song that'll help you get through the last 15 minutes mm -hmm. of your jog I think it's it's amazing too that the technology is finally catching up with it allowing these connections mm -hmm. to be made uh, yeah. the virtual uh, Real-time MRIs, real-time CAT scans, mm -hmm. yeah. um, and, and MP3 players in general. iPods are just uh, a miracle of our generation, <laughs> really. Um, yeah. I didn't have one when I was growing up. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, and now to think that you can have two or 300 pieces of music on, on a little tiny iPod yeah. shuffle yeah. Uh, is just miraculous. You know? So uh, I, think, I think maybe, uh, as I said before, is, 
-hmm. why, have we, why, have it, why has it been so long s since we've uh, made this connection? But I think maybe the, uh, the perfect storm of, of, uh, in, of invention mm -hmm. is, uh, is, right, is, up, is upon us right now. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I it's agree. so important to be able to bring this out into our community because that's part of what mm -hmm. musicians it's, it's almost yeah. a responsibility yeah. we experience sure. this great happiness and this great joy and we we reap the benefits of better intellectual yeah. understanding yeah. or emotional connections mm -hmm. so if we can share it with people especially elderly people who have dementia or alzheimer's yes. or even simple memory problems yeah. that that's our job as musicians to be able to mm -hmm. share that yeah, it feels so, so great to share music yeah. with another person. Um, so can, uh, can we talk about our next steps at Palmer High School? What are we going to mm -hmm. try to do next? Yeah. So we have, um, and how many songs do we have so far? Right oh. now, the iPod <laughs> library, uh, the iTunes library is up to 1,500 uh, albums. Oh, albums. Albums. Albums, yes. Oh my gosh. And we still have some more that have come in as donations that were we're yeah. ripping more in daily. Yeah. So we have mm -hmm. our music library is basically <coughs> set up. Mm -hmm. We just have to load the songs all into the iPods. And students are actually going to go out once we have the resources mm -hmm. and create playlists with the residents at Orchard Valley and Life Care and other nursing homes we work with. And basically what that entails is sitting down with a resident, uh, talking to them about what they used to listen to when they were younger and certain memories they have, you know oh, you know, what song did you dance to at your wedding or something? And then we'll take that information, make a custom playlist for them, hopefully, and then we'll actually sit there and we have splitters so we can have two pairs of headphones going on at the same MP3. We'll be able to listen and have that person-to-person -person experience in contact with the residents. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I think that, like, having the young people reaching out to the elderly people is really going to be a beautiful thing because the, the medical system now is so impersonal and feeling like they're maybe connected to somebody who's a part of the world now as opposed to receding into themselves as you know they experience age and ailments and it's going to be nice to have somebody you know I it shows that you care about them you care about you know their past about this is going to help you feel better and it's going to create a cure instead of a customer mm -hmm. mm, well put and I, I think um, being part of the solution is going to feel wonderful. Um, right now, we we're only, we're only have a small pool, but right. uh, it would be really great. I, I mean, I, I think you guys are going to be the beginning of something really huge. This is something that they should be doing nationwide, mm -hmm. yeah. um, for sure. But at least if we can start it here in our area of Western Mass, maybe that will get the ball rolling. and. Uh, mm -hmm. Why not all of Massachusetts? Why don't all yeah. of our elderly mm -hmm. residents have this sort of yeah. it have this sort of plan in place? And uh, I think if if we can show the success that we know we're going to get, uh, that uh, like reaching out to the student councils in, mm -hmm. in Western Mass and then in Massachusetts in general, I think it's a perfect it's a perfect yeah. place to jump off, and especially with high school students. Mm -hmm. I mean. Uh, I have to say, one of the complaints that, that, that we have sometimes is that uh, you're viewed in a, in a negative light. We see some rather unsavory things in the news, newspapers or what have you. Um, it's not always good news that comes out, and uh, it's very easy for people that don't get into the schools to think that kids are crazy or <laughs> yeah. impetuous or you know disrespectful. and. Uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. The truth is, abs is, is the absolute obvious, absolute opposite, <laughs> and, uh, and, and you really prove that point. Mm -hmm. um, I, and I think, I think that's common. I don't think, you know, you probably you get called the, uh, the, the me generation, mm -hmm. right, all the time. Uh, but I really, from what I see being in a school, um, I, see, I see a we generation yes. more than that. Mm -hmm. I really do. And... Uh, I think you're the ones that are going to make things better. Yeah. I mean, and it's like, as far as the documentary goes, it's called Alive Inside for a reason. And yeah. mm -hmm. as people that are going out into the world, essentially we have the ability and the opportunity to bring these people back to life, back into their own lives, and into knowing who they were as a person and who they are. Mm -hmm. 
And a lot of times we won't just be helping out them, their families will probably be so happy mm -hmm. to see them finally talking and expressing and probably right. remembering who their family members are and the past they've had with them. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And that's going to be like twice as beautiful even, yeah. you know? <laughs> <laughs> you have these people that are saying, oh, you know, there's Alzheimer's in my family. I'm worried. Hopefully there's a cure by then. But we have the opportunity to do something about yeah. that, to do something about the ailments that are plaguing people through generations of their family, mm -hmm. that we can make a change. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And it's exciting. We, can make a <laughs> we definitely can make a difference. Um, what, what can people do that are just, uh, just watching this? Um, what are some things that they can do to help us help someone else? Um, some tangible things that you can give to Palmer High School you can send in include over-the-ear headphones, mm -hmm. iTunes gift cards, CDs, different types of iPods, or even money, cash donations that mm -hmm. we will use to buy iPods mm -hmm. and music and whatever yeah. else mm -hmm. we, we need at the moment. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yep. Very good. And um, we are going to be uh, holding, we, it's, this is a constant need that we're going to yes. keep asking for items until we've satisfied the needs of all of our local area mm -hmm. yes. uh, facilities. But um, we will be showing Alive Inside again. We'll be having a showing mm -hmm. at Palmer High School. We'd like to invite everyone to that. Um, when it happens, we'll get the date out. And uh, that will be our collection date. So as, as you're coming across things, maybe cleaning out a kitchen drawer, or, and you come across an old iPod shuffle that hasn't been used in a while, um, or maybe you're cleaning out uh, your cupboards and you find some CDs, mm -hmm. uh, 30s, 40s, 50s, 60s classical music, really anything. We want to have a, a voluminous uh, iTunes library that we can just have available to any resident we want. Mm -hmm. And you don't have to send them in just on that showing date it's to be determined. Right. Like if you get them to Palmer High School, they will get to us if you send Absolutely. them into the office. Also, if you don't have anything to donate, you can always help your own family or, you know, grand yeah. friends as we mm -hmm. call them yeah. by you know just sitting down with them and saying what kind of music did you like or what did they play on your wedding night and mm -hmm. trying to remember for them and spreading the word to other people so that they know that this is something that can really help mm -hmm. very good spreading the word is is absolutely huge we don't want to oh, keep yeah. this to ourselves no. that's why we're here mm -hmm. um, yeah. but what about uh, one of the one of the issues we're having right now we're finding out is that it's difficult once someone already is in uh, the clutches of dementia or Alzheimer's to have that conversation. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, maybe uh, we could also advocate for some uh, preventative maintenance, as mm -hmm. in yes. maybe we talk to our, our parents or our grandparents mm -hmm. right now and ask them what their important music was. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and it wouldn't hurt to have a list of our own, too. Yeah, you did that, right? Yeah. 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 Start your own uh, My Life's Playlist. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and I ready? think it's uh, in the movie Alive Inside, um, they show a couple that live with music on all the time. Mm -hmm. So if you have grandparents, grand friends, or your parents, just start listening to that music now mm -hmm. and keep that going, and that might be a preventative measure. Right. And Excellent. fun. And fun. <laughs> have fun, too. <laughs> It's a great bonding experience to listen together. Yeah, definitely right. beneficial no, for everyone. Not as good as playing together, yeah. but that's, <laughs> all right. that's okay. True. Not everyone can be in band and chorus. That's our <laughs> <true. laughs> thing. Sorry. Although, if you want to be in band, come, come to school. We'll hook you up. Um, <laughs> anyways, um, I want to thank you guys, really, for taking your yeah. evening and coming yeah. out uh, mm -hmm. to speak about this. And it, it just shows how much you care. No problem. Something yeah, of course. About, so. <laughs> yeah.